It's that time of the week again as we welcome in BYU team captain Clark Barrington. Always a good conversation is about to ensue. We'll talk about the Boise State win. How good does it feel to be back at 500? Also, we'll talk a little bit about what you do with the downtime with the bye week. We've got a lot to cover. Let's get right to it. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jay Catch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys checking out the show. We are your only daily podcast focused on all things BYU. Title sponsor today is our friends over at Bet Online, where of course you can get more odds, lines, and props than ever before, and do it all season long. Get more information from our friends at Bet Online, where the game starts. Time now to welcome in BYU team captain Clark Barrington, obviously starting left guard for the BYU offensive line. Clark, thanks for joining us once again this week. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, let's start here. Big win up on the blue uh, up there at Boise State. Get you guys back to 500. Uh, give me your overall takeaway from that victory. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, it was a much needed win for sure. Uh, you know, uh, I think we were able to show what, what we really can do, um, you know, in, in that win, you know, both offensively, defensively. And and so it was just a good time for us to band together as as brothers and and go out and, and, and perform well. So it was a fun time. Now, uh, you guys going into that game, they were one of the statistically, depending on which metric you looked at, anywhere between top 10, top five, or even – top 25, I think their consensus top 25 defense out there. And you guys just piled up 532 yards on them. Did you guys see something on film going into that game thinking, okay, we got something for these guys? Or was that a bit of a surprise to you as well? Um, It wasn't, it wasn't a surprise. Um, you know, I think we've been able to, to kind of, you know, hold our own and, and do whatever we want to do for, for the past couple of years, you know, what, whether it be wins or loss. Um, you know, we, we've always had a, a good offensive attack, I think, against against Boise State, and and it showed again, you know, last weekend. And so, you know, we just we just went out knowing what we had to get done, and and we did it, and and we tried to execute to the best level as we could, and and it, and it worked out for us. So, I want to ask you, how important is it to have Jaron as a run threat in that offense? Yeah, I think you, you you saw how important it was, you know, in the game with with the QB draws that, that were called and, and then him just also sh- sh- scrambling and making plays on his own as well. Um, you know, big runs came came from that, and so, you know, he got us in good positions. So it was awesome. Now, obviously, uh, you got, I've talked to you in the past about this. I, I'm a guy, I pay attention to pro football focus, their grades for individual players each week. And you, uh, according to PFF, had one of your finest grades, if not your finest grade of the season overall. They, they really liked how you did both pass block and run block. I know you say you don't necessarily pay attention to those because you actually get grades sent to you from Coach Funk. But can you kind of give us an insight as to how you on the offensive line graded out in that game? Um, yeah, uh, just like you said, uh, I graded out pretty well. Um, okay. That's good. Yeah, yeah. so that was one of the, one of the higher grades in, in the offensive line room, so that's good. How how did the O line do overall like, across the board? Yeah, I think um, overall, I think we've had, you know, we have like what we call winning effort grades, and then there's the champion level, champion champion level grades, you know, just based on on how you played. And I think I want to say maybe four four out of the five were either winning or champion level, and so you know, I think think as a whole, we we played very well and and. And played, you know, like we should. So, now, uh, give us a little insight. You don't have to necessarily go into what they are, but what what are the different levels you guys get? Like, what are the levels you guys? What are the different levels you can get graded out at? Yeah. So, pretty much anything above, anything between an eighty and an eighty-five is a winning is a winning grade. And then anything above an eighty-five is is a champion level um, grade. So, okay. that's kind so. of the, the grading system. So. So a good week overall, then. It's the old yeah. tip. That. That's, that's yeah, awesome. Sure. 
Now, a lot of people were really impressed with Hinkley Ropati and what he did, obviously, in that screen game. Uh, those were some of the finest design screens that I, I'm a football junkie, junkie. You and I have talked enough that, you know, you know, I just love good football and those screen setups were absolutely masterclass stuff. Is that, are those new screen designs or that stuff you ha had in the playbook that you just hadn't pulled out quite yet? Yeah, no, they, they've been archived for sure for a while. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we've been repping those, um, I think last season, even this season. And so, you know, we've had lots of reps at them at practice and you know the opportunities just just happened to be there in the game and and so it, it was the play that was called so now how fun is that as an offensive lineman to get out there and you see one two three guys but you got three or four of your buddies out there and you guys are like all right we're gonna we're gonna clean house on this yeah no it was it's way fun uh you know both times we ran it there really wasn't many people out there and so you know i just thought to myself well break down get a body on a body and let Hinkley, let Hinkley do his thing. Let him work, work off my block. And so, um, you know, that was kind of the mindset of, of all the guys going out there and making the wall for him. And then he did the rest and, and made a few people miss on that first one and, and took it to the house. So you guys obviously have had a kind of a cavalcade a rotating cast of characters at running back and Hinkley is kind of the latest guy to, to step up. Is that something that he has shown in practice that they showed in that game? Or is that something that you were as surprised as everybody else? Like, Hey, Hinkley can play ball. Um, no, I, I think there's, there's been great, um, things coming from Hinkley, you know, all year round. Um, you know, he's a, he's a great athlete, great player. And, and, you know, just like every great player, he's, he, he was ready when his name was called. And so, um, you know, he, he made the most of his opportunities for sure in, in that game. Now, obviously, you guys get back to five and five, and all but assure your guys selves of a bowl eligibility. I, I'm, I'm I'm not looking ahead, uh, but I'm 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 giving you guys the win over Utah Tech. You're supposed to be an FCS team, so you're gonna make it to six wins, and there'll be a chance for you guys to go to Stanford and potentially make it a winning season with the seventh win uh, on Thanksgiving weekend. But how important is it for you guys to be sitting at five and five right now versus potentially being four and six and having to win those two games just to make it to a bowl? Yeah, I think. Um... You know, it's a it was a really big deal for us, and and I think you could kind of feel that by by the way we were playing the game, and and then also you know the celebration afterwards. We we knew how big of a game it was, and and the importance of winning it, and so you know we're just grateful and and happy to to be in the spot that we're in. So. I, want, I got a couple more questions about Boise. We'll also talk about the, the off week, the bye week upcoming as well. We'll get to those in just a moment. But it's that uh, time of the week again, Clark. I, I'm going to throw you on the spot here once again. Our friends over at Nissan. The, this week's thrilling moment in college football is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. The thrilling designs behind the new lineup from Nissan are intended to empower drivers in vehicles as capable as the drivers themselves. When I think of unbelievable abilities on the field for this week's thrilling moment, it has to be go. Yeah, it's, it's got to be Puka's game-winning touchdown for sure. <laughs> there can't there, there can't be anything that tops that right now. So, yeah. Well, and that's the thing. I'm not sure there's going to be many things that are going to top that in the next five, six, seven, ten years. That's an all-timer. Like, the, oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how many people really realize this. He made one of the catches that you're going to see on a highlight reel 25 years from now. For sure. Yeah. No, it was it was it was a crazy play for sure. <laughs> now. Okay, let me real quick on this. Kalani said that he thinks that there are some practice catches that Puka has uh, put on film that obviously are archived, et cetera, that he thinks could compete with that. Do you, do you agree with that? I I think so. I, I don't know. That that catch was pretty dang good. Um, you know, and just the whole moment of it and the timing, like, you know, it's hard It's hard to beat that. But he for sure makes plays, you know, every day in practice and, and doing those things. He, he does have some pretty good catches. He, he's, he's a great player. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, I think it was a really easy one this week. This segment has been inspired by the thrilling new designs featured across Nissan's new lineup of vehicles. Pursue what thrills you in the all-new Frontier Armada or Pathfinder today. It's available now at NissanUSA.com. Continuing on now with Clark Barrington, BYU team captain, but a quick reminder for you guys to make sure you check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast from the games that matter to the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, the podcast is available on this app, YouTube, and wherever 
you get your podcast. All right, Clark. Obviously, uh, the the series with Boise is going to be on hiatus, at least for the time being. This will be the this was the final matchup between the two. You and I talked about how important it's been to BYU over the years, but how important is it for you guys? Do you feel like to have bragging rights going into uh, what is going to be who knows how long before they play again? Yeah, no, I think I think we were eating that up, you know, the, okay. the bragging rights and and just being able to hold that over their heads for for a little while, you know, the when it was COVID and we went down there and blew them out. We took a picture on their field, and then they came came and beat us, you know, at home last year, and they took a picture on our field. So we had to do it once more after we beat them down there. So we stopped in the end zone and got a team pick, and and, and we'll we'll be holding that over their heads for a little while. I think so. Is that's that's the type of stuff that I think rivalries are built on, but at the same time, it seems like you have a pretty respectful, a pretty respectful rivalry in many ways. Because after the game, a lot of you guys were kneeling in prayer with with each other. That goes back, I think, to that pandemic year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, yeah, after the game, uh, one of their coaches, you know, said the prayer, and and we just all huddled together and, and said a quick prayer. So it was it was cool. Can you? I'm trying to remember. I I remember reading about how that got started during that pandemic year. What what, what caused that to to start? Honestly, I have no idea. I think it's just maybe one of their traditions. Um, okay. After every home game or after every game, they just circle up and say a quick prayer. Okay. And so we just decided to join them. So. Well, very cool. Yeah. So obviously, yeah. you guys have the bragging rights now. You're five and five on the season. Now you're finally finally. 10 weeks into the season, you guys finally get an off week here. You guys get a chance to kick back a little bit. I know you guys are practicing some this week, but uh, yeah. how how important is this week for you guys? Uh, I think it's super important. Um, you know, it gives us an opportunity to to kind of get healthy again, hopefully get some guys back that, that haven't been around for a little bit, and then also just help us kind of perfect our craft. Um you know, just focusing on the small, small, simple things, you know, the small techniques here and there and, and just trying to perfect our game um, and not worry about a whole lot of scheme and, and that type of stuff. So it, it's, it's been good so far. How much wear and tear does 10 weeks straight of football put on your body? Yeah, I, th- I think uh, your your body will, will never get used to it no matter how many breaks you get or, or whatnot. So, you know, you're, you're always going to be banged up and and just trying to play you know uh, the best of your abilities on on what you got that week so now obviously off weeks uh, you guys are going to do the practicing uh, coach satake said earlier this week that he he's planning on allowing some of the younger guys that have red shirts intact that can play this time of year etc give them some extra work this week you're a veteran guy so uh, how much work do you get versus maybe some of the understudies to you on that offensive line yeah for sure um you know, there is a bigger focus on getting getting some of the younger guys reps, but um, just like I said, every day we're, we're going in and, and we're putting in the work and just trying to get better. You know, with the with the small things and, and whether it comes to technique in the run game or pass or or whatnot, we all have a list of things that we need to work on. And so, you know, we go to practice, you know, focusing on those and trying to get better there, and then being able to help coach up the young guys or or get them some extra reps here and there and and see them improve. It's always a good time too. So now this is something that goes back to the Bronco Mendenhall era. And I'm not hundred percent certain if it still exists with, with Kalani, but uh, they used to have what they called scout team. It was like, I remember it was, a, it was a Thursday night. They had like scout team games where the the starters on both sides, offensive and defense, would essentially be the coaches for the scout teams. And it was like one of the biggest games of the week. We're talking like guys are just whooping and hollering. I remember it was a huge, huge deal. <laughs> you guys still get into like the scout team getting after it against one another at all? Yeah, for sure. Uh, we, we had a team segment today. Um, okay. We're a scout team. We're a scout team. And so – you know, we were able to to get into it and hoot and holler and, and cheer on the guys that usually, you know, don't get to play that much. So it's always a fun time um, being able to support those guys and in, in, in what they're doing. So now uh, along the offensive line, you guys obviously have been playing together for quite a while. You got like Blake Freeland. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking of it, et cetera. You, a Harris chance. You guys are a very veteran unit. So uh, give me a, give me a sense. Uh, obviously you, Blake, Harris, Joe, 
uh, all have decisions to make after this upcoming season as to what your future is going to be in football. But I I'm not asking about that. I want to ask about the guys behind you, kind of the next group upcoming. How bullish or scared, I guess, if, if you are, are you about the younger the younger guys in the unit? No, I think I, I think there's some some good young talent in the room. Um, you know, they, they just continue to get better each and every day. Um, and and this week it's it's been a great week because we've been able to you know the, one one of the best ways to to learn is just to make mistakes. And so, you know, of course there's going to be a few of those. You know, they haven't ran you know our offense in a while because they have been given those scout looks. And so you know there's there's things that that they do mess up on or they forget or whatnot. And, I just, you know, through those mistakes, learning, learning from those and then moving on and, and then doing it right the next time. You know, I think it's it's been a good time for them to just learn and improve and continue to develop. So now whenever you decide that you're done with your playing career, whether, whether playing career at BYU, whether it's after this upcoming season, two weeks, two, three weeks from now, or if you decide to play another year at BYU, you're going to leave a sizable hole at left guard. Now, if you were able to pick one guy that you've worked with on this squad and say, Coach Funk. That's the dude taking my spot when when I move on. Who would it be? Oh gosh, I don't know. It's it's hard to say. Um, if I was trying to you know throw somebody there that's you know exactly the same person as I am, I would probably just throw my brother there. You know what I mean? Fair if they they're wanting the same same type of thing, um, you know, he's very similar to to how I am and just the mentality and you know playing physical and all that stuff but you know i think he'll he'll be able to play some other places and do well there too so you know th there's a couple guys i could throw in there but hey it's a good politically correct answer because you do have family members who will let me know if you had had you not picked campbell so <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah for sure uh, i'm just saying you, you, you played your card cards right that's smart smart move on your part all you right know, so now obviously with a bye week uh it gives you some extra downtime what is the, I don't know, what is the one thing you're looking forward to doing most this weekend? Sheesh. Um, you know, uh, I'm not looking forward to it a whole lot, but probably just catching up on some homework. Okay. <laughs> Try, trying to maybe get a little ahead a little bit so I don't have to focus on it too much in, in the coming weeks. But, you know, trying to get that done and then, I don't know, just, just relax and, and be able to watch football for fun. So. That'll be a good time. I, I guess I, I didn't mean to, I didn't necessarily anticipate asking this, but how difficult is it for you guys truthfully to stay, stay up on your schoolwork? Cause you guys do essentially two full-time jobs. School's full-time football's full-time and you guys have to balance that. And in your case, you're married, et cetera. I know guys like Jaron have kids. I, I'm right. frankly stunned. You guys are able to keep up with as much as you guys keep up with. Yeah, it's, it, it can be difficult. I think there's a lot of prioritizing. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, what's what's the most important assignment that I need to get done? What's worth the most points and and kind of weigh, weigh it out that way. So, um, yeah, hopefully this week I'm able to just get get everything finished and and, you know, just continue to hopefully do well in my classes. So I got a couple more bi week questions for you as well uh, as well before we wrap up here. I also want to talk to you. It's election season. I've got I've got I've got a little bit of a. A, a question for you. I want you to answer on this. It, it's it's not political. It, it's actually going to relate. Sounds to good. So I want to get to that. We'll get to that in just a moment. Let's talk uh, first about one of our good friends over there at uh, at Built Bar. Now, Clark, I, I've got one of the Cougar Tell Built Puffs right here. Uh, they are a, an exclusive to the BYU football program. Uh, my yeah. mother-in-law, funny enough, actually recently discovered them and said they are her new favorite of all the built bars and trust me Clark my mother-in-law she she's got a she's got a, like a, a setup at her house that rivals your guys' your your wall down there in the wall oh, wow. she she's she's a big fan but she says those That's are awesome. Big, uh, how how important are deals like that cuz that's an NIL deal you guys have with built bar it's pumping money right back into your guys' pockets as, as student athletes how important has that deal been for you guys Yeah I think I think you know every NIL deal we were able to get you know it's super important and we're we're grateful for you know everything we we receive and um you know like you said we do put a lot of time time and effort into to playing the game and and going to school and and it doesn't leave a lot of time to to try to make money if needed and 
And so this, just these opportunities, you know, they, they help provide for, for some of the needs that, that we do have. So we're, we're just grateful for those. Well, if you want to support Clark and the rest of the BYU football program, I encourage you guys to get to built.com right now. While you're there, use the promo code locked on 15. That's L O C K E D O N one five for 15% off your order. Best part is if you buy the Cougar tell puffs, 15% of the proceeds go right back to athletes like Clark Barrington and the BYU football program. But also they have a brand new flavor. Clark, I don't know if you've tried it. Have you tried that new snickerdoodle chunk. I haven't. It's money. Uh, I'm a big <laughs> fan and it, it's, Pretty darn tasty. The best part is they're absolutely incredibly healthy for you relative to as, as good as they taste. So give them a shot now. That's locked on 15 at built.com. Support BYU football, support athletes like Clark by doing it with our friends over at Built Bar. Also need to talk to you today about our friends over at UCCU. Uh, they've got a really, really cool thing going on right now. They're offering a 15-month savings certificate with an incredibly high APY of 4.00%. Plus, you can jump up to an even higher rate of return anytime during the life of your certificate. All of us know that interest rates and inflation are both on the rise, as if we all hadn't noticed that. But the good news is UCCU can help you use this current rate, rate rise in rates to your advantage to help build your savings. A savings certificate is similar to a savings account. Both are great ways to earn a safe return on your money over time. But here's the difference. Saving certificates, you make one deposit, then let your money grow and grow and grow with a fixed rate of return that's much higher than a standard savings account. You can start this for as little as $500, my friend, to start building your savings. Uh, you can do it small or big, no matter what you want to do. Once again, it's a 15-month savings certificate with an incredibly high APY of 4.00% and a variety of term options to help match your specific needs. You can get started now by visiting uccu.com, stop into one of their branches, or call them. They'd love nothing more than to help you guys out. Once again, it's uccu.com. Come to learn more to get started with that savings certificate today. UCCU, love where you bank. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys checking out the show, especially when we have guys like Clark Barrington here on the program. Now, Clark, uh, obviously, uh, bye weeks, off weeks, you guys get that downtime. Talk about the fact you're going to do some schoolwork, hopefully watch some football. Give me the, I guess, the the underrated uh, activity or uh, something you do during your off weeks that you think is absolutely critical to your success as a player, whether it's it's a football-related deal or something that's away from the football field. Oh, gosh. I don't know. Just I, I think just having downtime. Okay. Um, you know, we're going to have a, a little longer of a weekend. Um, so just, just having that time to ourselves to, to kind of do whatever you want is, is a bonus for sure. Oh, I, I, I can, I can respect that. That's the best part about it is you, you do have that downtime and you're married, obviously. I'm sure there's a date night uh, planned in there a little bit, or just yep. kick it with your wife. Cause you guys are on so often, like you guys you go from practice to school, to, uh, back to practice sometimes or, or to yeah. wait thing. It, it, it's tough to really find that downtime. Yeah, for sure. And it keeps you busy. Now, uh, when it comes to uh, you guys as student athletes, uh, you go out to a lot of other BYU sporting events. And I, I'm, I'm asking this question because you and I have the unique distinction of both being married to former BYU softball stars. Uh, so I, I'm accepting the softball side of things because both you and I, well, we're kind of married <laughs> into it. You're, you're required to, to support that when you, when you marry sure. you athlete in that sport but are you a guy because i know that byu basketball just started up this week got a pretty thrilling win uh, over uh, idaho state monday night are you a guy who likes to go out to other byu sporting events um yeah i do i do enjoy it um just like you said you know definitely definitely will find find me at the the softball games um you know when my wife was playing and then we, we had, we've actually gone to i think maybe one one or two of their fall games, you know, just my wife wanted to see her old teammates and stuff. Yeah. So we went to, to a couple of those and then, uh, it's always a good time going to see some volleyball. Um, you know, those are always fun games and then, uh, you know, basketball, you try to stop in there every now and again, but yeah, it's, it's always a good time to, to watch, to watch some other BYU sports. So. Well, I was going to ask you because I, I'm a guy who grew up BYU football in the fall and then it transitioned into BYU basketball. Those are kind of the two things that I grew up kind of a steady diet of watching the Cougars, but I've since expanded out. I'm a big fan of the volleyball programs. I I, I agree with you. They're a thrilling, thrilling product. Yeah. 
chance to see him. Is there, is there, I was going to ask you, is there one BYU sport out there that you think is more underrated than another? I don't know. I, I, I would just have to go with, with volleyball. I think it's always a blast. You know, it's, it's crazy to see, you know, them fly through the air like they do and, and hit the ball, you know, super hard and, and just, it's just always a good environment, fun time. So it's always always a good time going to watch them. All right. So we're recording this on election night. Uh, so the, the, the votes are being tabulated, all that stuff. Uh, Clark, who on the BYU football roster right now do you see future, as a future politician? I'm not saying like president of the United States, but somebody you could see in politics down the road. Oh, gosh. Um. Uh... Probably. Oh, I don't know. This is this is a hard question. I think there's a, there's a few guys. Um, well, throw them out. Uh, let's, you don't have to go necessarily with just one. One guy that I would want to see is probably Thomas Gunther. You know, he's just a good dude. I'd vote for him. I I, <laughs> I had a sneaking suspicion that Talmadge was going to find his way into this conversation. <laughs> He's he's probably one that you know I, I would support him and whatever he's doing. You know, ho- hopefully his ideas are good and, and whatnot. But you know, he's he's just a solid guy. Um, so I, I I would I would support him for sure. Anybody else? Oh, I don't know. I would probably just stick with him for now. Okay, fair enough. Uh, see, yeah. here, here, here here's the thing. I think Jaron Hall, if he ever wants to get into politics, would be an absolute, like, just masterful politician. Yeah, just, he's he's pretty good at talking circles. I'm he, just he, saying, he, come on now. Yeah, he, he is. You're right. You're right. It, it's pretty hard to to lose a or to win a uh, a discussion with him. So he's pretty good at just talking, talking in circles, and never getting to the point. So. <laughs> I wish I could get I, I need to find a way to do this at some point. I need to go pull um video and audio from like back in 2018, 2019 when he would talk to the media and show how far he has come in terms of in terms of his public uh, persona because he was the king of the one and two word answer Clark. <laughs> and now you're right. He he could talk you in circles and all of a sudden you're like, I'm not sure what he just said, but it went for two and a half. Yes. Minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, good times. Well, Clark, uh, thank you so much once again, as always, for taking the time. I uh, look forward to catching up with you as you get ready for a senior night. Oh, with regards to that, are the coaches essentially asking you right now, even if you're considering uh, leaving at this point? I, I this goes for you and other teammates. Are you guys essentially expected to go out there and walk on senior day uh, just to have that opportunity? Yeah, for sure. They they've given people that option for sure. Um, just if you think you might go, if you, you're not sure you're undecided or whatnot, he's, they, they've given us that option to, to walk that night. So, well, very cool. We will get you ready for that next week against Utah tech, the mighty trailblazers making the trek North from St. George. I will get ready for that game, but Clark, thanks again for taking the time as always. Thank you. There you go. That's Clark Barrington uh, for Clark. I'm Jake. Thank you once again for taking the time to check out Locked On Cougars and making us your first listen of the day. I want to encourage you now to make your second listen. Our friends over the Locked On Big 12 podcast. Fantastic stuff getting you up to date on everything going on in the Big 12 conference. Check that out free and available wherever you get your podcast. Once again, for Clark, I'm Jake. Have a great rest of your day. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast. See ya.